John Radigan here. I've known Nate, Nate Newton for 35, almost 35 years. And Nate Newton always has an opinion about everything. But when you let Nate free on a bunch of Cowboys rookies at a rookie camp, man, he's got lots of opinions. And he is going to look right at you through his camera and say, let me tell you something featuring John Radigan, baby. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, sir. It's oh, going to be this short is and sweet a day. This, day. this is a week, man. The, the weather is perfect, Nate. We still got sports going on all over the place. And you have been to a Cowboys mini camp, man. That is uh, that's awesome. What did you see? What did you find? What did you think? What did you feel? You know what? What I saw was a lot of people running around in shorts. Yeah. What I was happy for is none of these guys was getting physically beat up or worn down. Because <laughs> I, all I remember when I walked on the field, I looked at my hands and said, wow, I ain't got to tape up my hands. I ain't got to tape up my ankles. And more importantly, these kids out here ain't got to be brutalized. They first camp into the NFL. That was yeah. nice to see guys running around, uh, spry, feeling good and learning the plays without getting brutalized. Yeah. So we talked last week about how your very first mini camp with the or rookie camp with the Redskins went and you were getting beat up and pounding on people and all that. Did you see that change while you were still playing or has that change come since Nate, as far as now it's more of a mental process, not physical at the rookie camp. That started maybe seven, eight years ago where, Certain okay. teams are not – longer than that, maybe 15 years ago where certain teams started backing up and just letting it become a mental thing. I think it always been that way with teams that were 49ers, guys that were uh, Coach Walsh, disciples, versus Bill Parcells, disciples, or Joe Gibbs, disciples. Those guys will beat them up, you know, uh, bring the blood, pick up your pace, uh, Show us what you know, and whereas it's always with the Coach Walsh disciples and those type guys and the Shanahan disciples, they always believed in getting it in mentally, getting it in uh, with speed and with um, with less contact as possible. Yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously you're an offensive lineman. You you were for your whole career. Uh, What did you see in particular from the offensive line, guys, you got, you know, the very first pick, Tyler uh, Tyson Guyton, and then you've got, of course, uh, Connor Beebe. Yes, the thing that I liked it about the Guyton kid, I had heard so much where, oh, he's a big guy. Oh, my God. When I look at him, I'm looking at a young Red Oak. You know what I'm saying? That's 300 yeah. years old. That's wide and thick and big. Wrong. He's slim. He's like a palm yeah. tree. He can bend. He can turn. He can twist. He's not stiff. That is what my early uh, observation is. Uh, he's long. He's got kind of a heavy bottom. That means he's got a base to him, but he can turn, right? What I mean by that, he, he's like he got some hip movement. Seems like he got some feet movement. And you can't see my feet tapping, but they tapping. They tapping. And, that, and that's what I like. When I'm looking at my left tackle, he ain't got to be the strongest. And he ain't got to be the gnarliest, but I need for him to be limber. And then we can let the strength coach strengthen him up as the year go on, as the season go on. But I need his quick feet and loose hips. And that and that is I remember uh, he seems to have that. I, I remember when Eric Williams first walked into the Cowboys locker room and you were just fairly still early in your career. And he was about the first one I saw that was c- kind of like that. I mean, he's like an offensive lineman, but he looked cut. Yeah. You know, yes. you remember that yeah. about, uh, about Big E? Ooh, and then and I'm going to tell you something. Then when Tyron Smith came, oh, my yeah. God, a human cyborg. I had never seen an offensive lineman. And still to this day, that that that. If I see a Tyron Smith in the draft with the same tight feet that Tyron had, because E was a right tackle, and he was nothing but a right tackle. His mentality, his footwork, the way he moved, but this kid Tyron Smith was everything. And so when you see guys built like that and you can get them, they're worth their weight in gold. They're almost equal, just a little bit underneath of a quarterback. When you can get an offensive lineman that can move like Tyron Smith did, especially in his first seven, eight years, he is equal to a quarterback 
And, and, and don't let nobody fool you. Because even though Tyron last maybe four years or five years was seven, eight, maybe 12 games at the most, mm-hmm. he, he played for the Cowboys for 14, 15, 16 years. Uh, he saved the Cowboys a lot of money. He cost the Cowboys a lot of money by trying to uh, keep his talent. But, you know, but now e, Big E, that, that, that's a different animal. Yeah, he was that, that was a different animal, man. He he was like, he reminded me of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Terminator. When he told he the did. kid, he like, I'm not going to kill anybody. But the next guy he saw, he shot him in the leg. He said, but I didn't <laughs> kill him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, does Guyton have a little... Big E or a little uh, or a little uh, Tyron tell. Smith in him. Too early to tell. Yeah. They they told him yeah, kids stay off I the mean, ground. Three practices. Yeah. Do not fall on the ground. We need you up. Uh, he looked at nice. Uh, BB is everything that they said. He's thick. Uh, he's he's smart. He jumped right on that center center position and he seemed to have a for what little bit they gave him for this two or three day camp. He 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 commanded real well. Uh, he moves pretty good. They had another kid, number 64, Earl Bostic, who we had in last year. He's back. So for them to bring him back, uh, that means they like him. Yeah. Yeah. And so is it is it uh, he and, and Cooper Beebe that will be kind of uh, competing for the center spot? Uh, what's the big kid name? Uh, let, me, let, me, let me look on my thing. I keep – this kid got some stuff in his neck. And – and, uh, Brock Hoffman. Oh, Brock Hoffman. Hoffman. Yeah, that's right. That's, that'll be the first guy in at center. Uh, he's not big. I talked to Will McClay right quick, like, about BB. That's the only guy I want to ask about because I know T- Tyler's going to get every shot he can. But I wanted to know uh, as much as he could tell me, uh, the pro-, pro personnel guy, Will McClay, I wanted to know as much as he could tell me about BB. You know, because I don't want to get into training camp and we out there, John, and we were like, okay, Brock Hoffman getting all the snaps at first team yeah. center. We didn't yeah. draft this kid in the third round for that. So he's going to yeah. get more than his fair share of snaps at center. It may start out Brock Hoffman, but they won't be at the center. And uh, we'll say, even though Brock Hoffman is – Got a lot going for him because his mental toughness, knowing the offense. He's he's just not that big, burly guy that they would like at center. And if, if Brock beat him out, so be it. But they 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 hoping that BB can come in with his intelligence, with his tenacity and, uh, and ability that he can ease this guy Hoffman out of there. But we don't want to lose Brock Hoffman because you need that backup center. Sure. How big of a concern is it for you, a former offensive lineman, that we are asking two dudes to switch positions? Now, I get it. Guyton was, you know, the right tackle with a left-handed quarterback. So essentially, he was doing the same job on the right side as he'll now do on the left. But it's still different. You, you have different footwork. There's a lot to learn for both these guys switching positions. How uh, how concerning is that? It's more with my center. Because the center has to learn how to come up, command the offense, command the offense as well as the quarterback. He has to see where the strength of the uh, the power of the defense, and what I mean by that, the one, two read, and possibly a three. He's got to always tell us where the mic at, so we can set the rest of the offensive line. The mic is sitting over here to his left, and the guy's over his head, and the guy's over the over the uh, right guard. He got to be able to say, oh, oh okay, that's a over. You know, uh, that's a over with with a back, but the mic shifted to the left. So he's like, hey, right here, over the set, over the left guard, here's our mic. Now we go one, two, three. You know, one the mic, two whatever, and three possibly a blitz from out there on the corner, depending on whether it's run versus pass. So this center has to command the uh, protections, run and pass. So the quicker he learns that, the easier it is for that. Because what you're trying to do is walk up to the line, and when the quarterback look, once he say, okay, 55 is my mic, now he can start saying, ooh, all right, I'm going to check out of this play because it's a better play. But if he got to come up and say, okay, there's the mic, 
Here's an over. Now that's three seconds. We not lost of him reading, pre-reading the, uh, the, the, the the secondary. We want our quarterback mind on the secondary, not on the down line. Unless we have a yeah. Lawrence Taylor type good dude, right. then you, the quarterback yeah. really wants to know where he's at. Yeah. So that, that's an interesting question. Does the center you know, elected step when you guys had him, uh, who is a really intelligent center, obviously, is he is he identifying that mic or whatever he needs to identify literally as you guys walk to the line or to is it line after you set. sort of gotten set? As we because we we ran a hurry up and get ready, a hurry up and wait offense. That means. Troy got in, said this, the 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 the, the uh, protection, the run play versus uh, either pass play or the check with me, and we got out of the huddle. We want to be walking up to that huddle with as much time left for Troy, even though we weren't going to change many plays, to look around where the West Coast offense or this Dallas Coast offense, whatever they got, they want to get out of the huddle as quick as possible. Yeah. So, so uh, Dak can walk up and say, hmm. There's the safety. Oh, here's my corner faking. He ain't coming though, cause it, cause what my say how my safety is still sitting back. This dude ain't coming. You know what I'm saying? Or, this, or my safety is sitting back. Yeah, he's coming. So he can say, okay, we'll stay with this play to still give us our best. Or we can change the play, and that way the center can look up. Oh, he changed the play. Mike is not there now. Our, our direction is over here, over me now, going out to that 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 the original Mike. Now he's the Sam. Now we we going one two to our left instead of one two to our right. So so if a play gets changed, does the center have to make that change too? Or I mean, I know he does well himself, but does he call is, us to the rest? Everybody is knows the play. So yeah. a lot of times, guys are smart enough to say, "Okay, that Mike done went to the middle now instead of to the left." And but the center sometimes say, "Hey hey hey, new Mike, new Mike." Uh, Mike, 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 number 69, 69. And, that, and, uh, and the guys on the left already know because the play has changed. Okay, 69 is our guy going to the left. Now we, here's the Sam backer. That's the hot read maybe if they bring both these guys. Now my quarterback has to see this. My tight end has to see this. Or my slot back has to see this. And now when that, that linebacker, both linebackers come, oh, I got a quick slant. Instead of that deep slant, 15-yard slant, I got a five-yard slant. I'm coming across now. Boom. Dak dropping on him. Hey, yak yards with uh with our boy C D Lamb. Yak yards, yeah. baby. Yeah, he'll go for days. Yeah. Uh and so does that does that center make at least one call every play? Every play. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah. Even when it's uh, a no. Even the most basic defense against you, he's still making that call. Yeah, even yeah, even as a no huddle. You know, quarterback, ah, da, 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 da. he called what he called. Center say, if it's spell, if it's a pass, you need to know. You need to know because if y'all on the different hot pages and that tight end on a different hot page or that slot backer or that slot receiver or that outside receiver on him, you know, but the outside receiver, he's doing everything off, mostly off site anyway. He looking, ooh, okay, these two guys up, I may have a hot here, you know, or I may be one on one here. You know, he may be coming to me. So. That's fantastic. I love that uh, some of the word, the news I saw coming out of the star this week, uh, this weekend when the when the mini camp or rookie camp was there was just how hard a worker uh, that Connor Beebe has been as far as, you know, literally uh, asking moms and dads and brothers and grandmas, snap me the ball. I mean, I'm going to snap you the ball. Stand behind. I'm going to snap you the ball. You know, don't uh, break your grandma's um, fingers. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, I love to hear it, Ken. Of course, he's got a good pedigree. His dad played, his brother plays. Uh, he, he, uh, he, he knows what it takes, it seems like. It, and that's what you have to have, a guy that's dedicated. And, and you heard me say when this draft first started, my always my biggest fears with draft picks, especially first, second, and third round picks, is our fans and our media get to these guys and it don't, and, it, and it's not about football no more. But you, you worrying about other things, and and I just think those these first three years, it's got to be all about football. It's got to be all about football. Then in your fourth year, I'm not saying you have not set things in place for you for outside of football, but let football be your main thing that you care about, 
And that way you can be the best you can be until you get a good, good, solid routine. All those other things will take care of themselves eventually, won't they? Especially if you're a Dallas Cowboy. It will. It will. Success. I mean, just think we've won 12 games the last two years. That's why Mike McCarthy should not be considered a lame duck coach. If he's considered a lame duck coach, that means every coach in the league should be getting ready to get fired. I mean, for real, man. I'm being honest. And and what about uh, the fact that he and still Dak and CD don't have uh, contracts beyond that next year? Soft rebuild, baby. Soft rebuild. They're going to wait. <laughs> the Cowboys are going to yeah. wait. And I think whether it's CD, whether it's Dak, whether it's uh, – Parsons, you know, uh, number one, C.D. Lamb should be here. I, I, I agree. You know, I fought for him last year. I fought for him the year before. C.D. Lamb, boom. Because you, it used to be you needed that running back to dictate your coverages. Now C.D. Lamb dictate coverages. He can tell you on first, second down, if he go in motion or just move five feet to the left or the right, you can about tell who, how they're going to cover him and how they're going to check him. So now it makes it easier for your quarterback reads. So you need that dominant player on offense, whether it's just an outstanding running back or an outstanding wide receiver like C.D. Lamb. So that is my first priority to get signed. That's just what I believe. Now- yeah, and he hasn't been taking part in any of the team activities. Um, obviously, at some point, they'll either have to sign him or he'll have to decide to do that, right? He doesn't want to risk uh, you know, holding out the, the into the is, regular season, does he? You know, Rat, I, I am through trying to guess what a player is going to do. Yeah. You, you, you and your agent and your family – it used to be you, your family, and your agent. But now you, yeah. your agent, and your family, or should I say your agent, you, and your family is going yeah. to decide how this go. And 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 uh, I, I'm rolling with CD. So just like last year, I was rolling with uh, Zach Martin. When he held out, I'm like, you know what? I'm with Zach. I'm with Zach Martin. You need him. He's that valuable. Boom. I'm with CD. We need him. He's that valuable. Boom, bottom line. So, but now, yeah. Parsons, Dak, I, ha- I have nothing to say about that at this moment in time, good or bad. I just want to see what's gonna, how this is going to play out. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, d- I don't want to disparage agents by any means because our uh, our producer, Spencer, is one, and Tom does some of that, you know, right. the, the big man from the company. So, but. How was it with your agent? Like, what was that hierarchy? Did you tell your agent what to do back in the day, or did he tell you what to do? Yeah, I, I told him uh, that I, um, you know, I wasn't going to hold out, you know. Uh, not not if it was going to be pennies. You know, pennies meaning uh, six or seven, ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars here. Now, pennies to them is like million. You know, I ain't holding yeah. out for if they want to give me 50 mil over two years, I'm not going to hold out if they give me 48, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, CD has told his agent what he expects and okay. Dak has told his agent what he expects. And the Cowboys have told uh, Parsons what they going to do. So, yeah, two got I- gets a chance to make an offer. The other one get told what to do. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, I just I hate to see a player get sort of run over roughshod by his agent. And the classic example here is Jordan Montgomery, who pitched for the Rangers, was as good as anybody in the postseason last year. He had Scott Boris for an agent. Boris kept telling him what to do, what to do. He all of a sudden he can't find a job. He finally did, but he can't find a job all all (laughs) offseason. He ends up firing Scott Boris. I mean, you should, right? At some point, you have to take control of your own career, Nate. I I tell people like this right here. When your career is over, you better not look back and say, mama, daddy, brother, sister, our agent wrecked my career. Uh Uh-uh. That do not work. 
especially with ex-players. Man, I listen to my mom. Man, I listen to my uncle. Man, I listen to my agent. Man, you dumb. Man, yeah. you super dumb. Man, you extra, extra stupid. Your career, your life, get somewhere in a quiet corner and decide what you want for you. And if mama, uncle, agent can get you, because some people's parents are their agents. Sure. Or some people's parents and friends are always knuckling them for extra this and extra that till they feel pressure. Man, get somewhere by yourself. If you have to leave and not tell anybody where you're going so you can think about what you want, then you call your agent and say, hey, man, look at here. This is what I want. This is how it's going to be. Can you do this? You know, I remember Total Recall, a movie where mm -hmm. the guy, uh, one of the big dogs told the guy, say, hey, I want this done. Do you think you can do it? And the guy said, yeah. He said, because if not, we're going we to execute you. <laughs> I mean, we're going to get rid of you. You know, I'm not going to yeah. say what he said. I'm just using a nicer word, you know, yeah. than what they yeah. said. So yeah. if you can't do what I want you to do, at the end of the year, I make 50 million. And you get 4% of that per year. You mean to tell me for that 4%, you can't do what I want you to do? If you can. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. 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 That's, 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 that's absolutely the attitude I, I hope all players are able to adopt. And I know sometimes it's hard because that agent is, I mean, again, of the uh, pedigree and, and the reputation of a yeah. Scott Boris, for example, uh, who have done great things for so many guys, but that one with Jordan Montgomery just didn't work out and he paid for it. So, uh, all right. So Nate and you, by the way, we need to do, a week where we just get on movie quotes with you, man. You remember? <laughs> you remember these old, movies? Though. My movie, the, yeah, the, I know it. I know the old movies. The, I'm with the you. The most up to date movie I got is Aquaman, or either, <laughs> or either. What's the movie where these people you you go into this machine and you come out Avatar? You Avatar, know, I ain't seen yeah, the new Avatar, but that Avatar, boy, that right up, boom, boom, boom. That yeah. was a movie yeah, right the, there, the bro. 3D. Yeah. Yeah, um, but we'll do that another day. Right yeah. now, I want to ask you because I know you've been watching this NBA stuff uh, with great interest and and loving on it. Uh, so, but I'm watching uh, the Thunder and the Mavs, and you know it's two to two. I mean, you know, it, it's no no time to panic by any means. But the Mavs, uh, they I felt like really let one get away in Game Four because they had a six point lead with five minutes left, and they've got the two best player, you know, of the three best players on the court at any given time in that series. Two of them are Mavs, right? You got Shea is one of them, and then Luca and Kyrie. So when you've got Luca and Kyrie versus Shea, right, and you're up by six with five to play, it seems like you need to get that game. Superstars. <laughs> I, I, I get tired of superstars yeah we as media we as fans anoint these guys yeah in a lot of cases they are very dis deserving and, and, and like football you don't have to play it basketball you don't have to play it but you listen to enough intelligent people and I, and I and and I really would hope the fans would listen to intelligent people. All of this is predicated on one player. And if this one player does what he has to do, then the Mavericks will not lose this. If Luca would turn loose the ball, you know, a little bit sooner, this, this game would not be where it was at. As great a player as Kyrie Irving is, he still has to find a, ryth a rhythm. Yeah. And Luca, if you're really injured, let someone help. And, and, and I know he's injured, but see, I tell people, as a professional athlete, I had some games where I, I couldn't walk and I played, but the difference was I didn't talk about it. 
so guys didn't come at me. They thought I was still intact, you know, and up to par. And I've had some games where I was barely hurt, and I didn't talk about it, and people didn't know. But when you overemphasize your injuries and it catches up with you, like every other game it seems to catch up with Luca. Then he'll get some rest, and then he'll come back out explosive. Well, it caught up with Luca the other night, and you can see it. You can see it yeah, mm-hmm. in his shooting, in his step back. And at the end of the game, he should have turned that thing over to Kyrie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Magic Johnson never had that problem. Uh, uh, Larry Bird never had that problem because they had talented guys. Larry Bird had James Worthy. Uh, Byron Scott, I think. He had guys that he would turn that ball over to. Uh, Kevin McHale for Bird. You know, uh, D, uh, DJ, uh, Dennis John- is it Dennis Johnson? Yeah. He, he, he yep. Turned the ball over, Luca. It's coming back to you. You know it is. Uh, uh, take some uh, t- to come down. Let Kyrie work his magic. I mean, in games where you've s- let him do that, he's helped you win. Uh, when there's no doubt of who you are and what you are, be a better team player. Like this Gildress kid or Alexander, whatever Alexander the Great, whatever his name. Or, <laughs> I mean, whether the kid with the first three first names or last names, well, depending on how you look at it, this guy took the game over. Out of 30 points, uh, 20 of it was either assist or him scoring. Yeah. And he said he had to let the game come to him. He had to trust in his players. Whenever Luca trusts in his guys, like – I've never seen Luca not be able to make a pass. He had like right. four or five egregious turnovers. I'm like, whoa, Luke. Yeah. I mean, it's too much going on in his head. My injury, crying for fouls, uh, not being able to play defense, you know, because he he good at help defense. You know, he like Larry Bird. He great at help defense. He wasn't doing – he was over – crying, hurt, which was obvious, and not playing any defense in his pass. And I had never seen his passing like that. So, yeah. you know, uh, I give Luca all the credit. I do. I do. I give him all the credit. But I am one of the probably the few guys, and I'm glad so when you come at me, not one, not two, not three, but almost four championships I got. So, I mean, thanks to him what the 49ers did to Mike Irvin. But anyway, I'm not going to yeah, cry yeah, about yeah. that. But anyway, yeah. so don't come at me. I know what it takes to win. It takes a team effort. Luca got to let this guy Kyrie help him because the other guy, Washington is the guy, or the yeah, other guys DJ. are giving it up for y'all. The other, the other role players are giving it up for y'all. So, and, and, and if Luca can just pace himself, and then at the end of the game, it's his because he's that type of guy. He, he can start the game. He can be a part of the middle of the game, and he can finish the game. That same way the other kid uh, with the multiple names for the Thunders. What's his name? Gil- Jake Gilgis Alexander. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I mean, this too. man, I, 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 I've i been trying. I've been trying to get this guy's name right, and I refuse to – Pronounce it until I can get it all right. Shea Gildress Alexander the Great. Yeah, I like Alexander the Great. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I like what this kid is doing. And uh, he's learning. He, he's learning. He, he, he know he hasn't arrived. And this kid, Chet Holmgren, he's like, okay, I'm not the offensive power. I'm going to be next year. But I'm going to block shots. I'm going to protect this rim. I'm going to do – the, everybody's playing their role. Now, the Williams kid, I think it's Jay, what, Jay Williams. Uh, yeah, J- J- Jalen, J-Dub, they call that one. Right. There's a J-Dub, J-Dub and a J-Will. Can ever yeah, just J-Dub. assert himself the whole game. He's been trying to pick his spots. He needs to assert himself the whole game. He needs yeah. to, need to just come out there and just play the whole game. Uh, that He is the missing link. You know, yeah. Charles Barkley called his dude out. 
uh, three, four, uh, about a week ago saying, this guy need to play. He need to come on out and play. He He's good enough to pick his spots, but you, when you're that good, don't pick your spots. Just come out and play, bro. He, if he yeah. just play, they'll, they'll be closer in games. They'll be close. One thing I like about this Dallas Thunder is they, they play pretty close games. Now, they get out of hand at the very end, maybe, but they yeah. play close during, during. They do. For the first two or three. They play close, man. Yeah. You know, it's just Four like. Four point uh, games. Yes. Yeah. Just like uh, the more gritty New York Knicks. They 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 going to play you close. If they got enough guys to put out there, they're going to play you close. I mean, yeah. I like toughness, man. And I'm going to tell you who is very disappointing. We brag for two games, but Minnesota, please. How about that? Hey, <laughs> Jokic is a handful, though, man. Jokic has just taken this series and put it on his shoulders, Let me tell man. You that dude man. is unbelievable. Let me tell you something. I wasn't no Jokic fan. I, I wasn't. But once you beat me and beat me and beat me, and I'm going to tell you like what Coach told me, I'm going to beat you till you love me. I love you, Jokic. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Jokic. You beat me until I love you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to beat you till you love it. This kid is this kid is unique. Yeah. And people say, well, you should have been. Nah, I don't get on trains that easy. See, I, I don't have to get on trains that easy. A lot of people get on the train. I don't get on the trains. Like Shea Gildress. I love him to death, but you got to beat me and beat me like this kid up in Denver. He's beat me. He's sludge hammered me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have no other you choice. You finally got to love him. Yes. You can't help it. Yes, I, I love winners. I love yeah. winners. Yeah. And I may not well, start he- like Like people tell me about Tom Brady, I say, shut up. He's the GOAT. Johnny Unanis yeah. and this kid, Tom Brady, they to me, they the GOATs. Yeah. 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 And that's uh, Lucas, real good friends with Jokic. So uh, maybe some of that pound, will rub he off. He's going to measure him pound Luka in the ground. Luka going to be loving him soon. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be beating on him. Oh, man, it's good, Nate. I love talking with you. I love hey, talking one other NBA thing with we you, get off. even uh, of course one, NFL, one other so. thing. One other thing. Yeah, man. I yeah. forgot I talked to Zim. I talked oh, to the defensive coordinator. Yeah. And he has evolved, but not to the point where he's player first. He's coach, responsibility first, then player he gets along with the guys. He talks to the guys. But believe me, he'll be down on the field. He's not a press box guy. When guys come to the sideline, he'll be sitting there. What did you see? How can we fix this? What is your technique like? What did you do on this play when you're supposed to have been here? So he's still a guy that demands that you do your job, know the defense, and then we'll love on you a little bit later. I just wanted to let That's y'all good. know that. I found that that's out tough from love. Yes. That's tough love. Is it's what called they call responsible that, love. Do your job yes, and sir. I will love you. Like Jimmy, do your job. I will love you. Don't do your job and I will find somebody else to do your job for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the harsh reality of it. Yes. Yeah. All right, Nate. It's beautiful, man. Fun talking to you. We'll do more next week. We'll have the Cowboys schedule by next week. And uh, we know all we know right now is they open against Cleveland and oh, uh, the GOAT. I don't know if he's the GOAT as a broadcaster, but uh, <laughs> right. Tom Brady oh, he'll Tom be Brady on? will be in the booth. Wow. Huh? And Greg Ellis is the defensive line coach for the Cowboys. I saw that. I love that Greg is back there. Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. Love I love Greg you, man. Ellis. I love yeah. you. I love you, my friend, John Radigan. I appreciate you yeah. and love you too, Nate. Yes. And we will uh, we'll do it again next week on Let Me Tell You Something. Tell you something. Ta-ta. Ta-ta.